how to keep Moringa trees bushy. Thanks for coming out to Numa Farms and Nursery today in Plant City, Florida. We're going to talk about the Moringa tree. And you may know this as the drumstick. The Moringa tree, also known as the drumstick tree, is native to India and Africa. It's a subtropical, tropical tree that we grow here, right here in Tampa, Florida. This is the most valuable part of the Moringa tree. It holds the most amount of nutrients. It holds the most amount of value. Um, it's eaten prevalently throughout the developing world as a staple food vegetable. And we got this one uh, from right here at Numa Farms Nursery. This is one of our first drumsticks that we harvested right on the farm some, from some of our trees. The reason why we're able to harvest drumsticks now so thick and big is because we popped the flowers off the drumsticks within the first year. So we've been here, we're doing, we're growing Moringa trees actually uh, in many, many different ways. And I'd love to share with you all the ways that we're growing. This is just gonna be a quick video about how to keep your Moringa trees bushy and when to grow drumsticks. Look at this. She just sprouting right there. I just put these in about two weeks ago. Um, from cuttings from some of our harvests. Let's see here, got a little, little sprout there. So they're just in pots. Uh, luckily the rains have started. Uh, I put this one here in the middle of all the others so that way she could tell the other sticks how to grow and give her some information, give them some information. Uh, great, and here we are. Here's our first stop. So we're, we, we've got some pots and uh, you can see here, these are Moringa trees in pots. Lovely, lovely bring of trees. Actually from cuttings, usually from cuttings, they have a little bit more information in the bark and the DNA that's being carried over to the new roots. And so they flower very easily. You can see here's a, here's a beautiful flower here. And we separate all the flowers. We keep the flowers and we sell them individually uh, separate from the leaves because they're even more anti-inflammatory than the leaves and they're great in teas and things like that. They're also very good pollinators for bees. But the purpose right now is to keep this tree bushy in a pot and beautiful. Uh, it's not an ornamental tree, but to keep it more bushy and flush, that way you get a better sale. And also it looks better and also you get fresh greens all the time, especially if you're at home and you have a pot of your own and she's starting to lose her leaves because you're starting to notice the flowers are being pollinated going to seed. A flower will pollinate, go to seed, and turn into a drumstick. This hangs off the trees like this, and it can take a lot of energy to make this drumstick. So what's going to happen is the, the tree is going to lose all its leaves, and it's going to put all the energy, it's going to stop growing, and it's going to put all the energy into making this vegetable. So what you're going to want to do is pop all your flowers off within the first year, two years, until she's tall enough to, to get flowers that you can't reach, that's when I usually know that she's tall enough to, to go to flower, go to seed. She's got tons of branches and they're taller than me and I can't reach them. I'm like an animal in the wild seeing these beautiful flowers as a food source and uh, eating them. So what we're gonna do, and I'll show you and I'll do a walk about, about how to keep your Moringa trees even more bushy, especially when they're in a pot you just want to pop the flower off and see if I can get a view here and you just want to pop that off and that's it. And you can eat them fresh off the tree. Mmm, super spicy. And what that's going to do, let me see another flower here. It's going to keep these trees bushy. And I'm going to save all these flowers. I'm going to set them aside. I'll pick these up in a second when I come back here. Just want to pop all these flowers off these trees here because I want these trees to stay bushy and uh, because we are in a nursery setting they are good for pollinators and for eating but we want to keep our trees bushy and we don't want them to start going to seed one of the ways to keep your trees from going to seed is just popping the flowers and so that's what we're doing we're just popping the flowers you can see we just get a handful of flowers and you can 
you can you can dry them you can tea them you can eat them fresh you can fry them so we're going to set all these flowers aside for now let's go to another section of the nursery here we got to see uh the cuttings getting going oh popping back works every time in every different size let me show you an example here we have lots of examples of how I cut them back in in cone pots. So these are for shipping. These ones got a little bit too tall for the boxes. People are coming to pick these up. Um, they're starting to the leaves are turning yellow because they're stretching, and it's natural for moringa leaves to turn yellow at the bottom. So you just pop the bottom leaves off. She's growing taller and taller, and she'll have fresh new green leaves at the top. Moringa leaves are short life, short lifespan. They don't live very long. They're very soft. They're very gentle, very thin. And one of the ways to keep your Moringa tree bushy, if she's starting to lose her leaves, if she's starting to stretch, if she's starting to get too tall, you cut it and it regrows a new stem. So if at any time you receive any trees from us and the trees look damaged up top, have no fear. Just cut the stem and she will regrow a new one, just like this. And so we've just been sitting these ones here um, probably for an extra two weeks and cut the stem back and look at that, a whole new stem. That's how you keep your moringa trees bushy, is constantly cutting them back. Beautiful little nursery getting formed here. Let's keep going. I'm gonna keep talking to you about how to keep your Moringa trees bushy. Please, if you haven't yet, like this video, subscribe to the Numa Nursery YouTube channel, and uh, let us know if you have any questions about Moringa, if you'd like to learn more about Moringa, please keep in touch. We share everything Moringa on this channel and everything at the farm. So we got some trees going. You can see that they're just popped. These are all about maybe two months, maybe a month, two months. Got a nice little row forming, couple rows forming. As I go further back into the shade, they get a little taller. They get a little bit more flush. And they start to look a little bit more green. They're more bushy. If you're growing Moringa trees in a pot, try not to keep them in full, full sun. They don't have a cooling mechanism. Their roots are no longer connected to the earth and the ground, and they're not protected by that natural climate, that natural geothermal temperature, which is cool, like 67, 67 degrees. So our, our goal eventually is to build a shade house out here, get these young trees that are in pots in some partial shade, so that way they're not in full sun. They'd look a lot better if they had some shade. Moringa trees love full sun, but to keep a Moringa tree bushy in a pot, keep it in some partial shade. That way it has some cooling uh, throughout the day. And one technique to water, so that way it doesn't lose its leaves and it stays bushy in a pot, is to consistently cut it back. Just pop the top. So let's just take a top here and we'll take it up by the second layer. So like it's losing its, it's, losing its leaves, right? And you can just pop the top off. See if I can get it with my finger here um, without hurting myself. You want to get like a clean cut. Let's see if I can, I don't have any nails right now. So what you normally want to do is you just want to kind of pop it, pop the top. It'll regrow from, from, the, uh, from the nodes just below from where you popped it. So I just kind of twisted the top off there. That's the top, you can eat it. Mm. Ooh, that's really, ooh, that's strong. All organic, all organic. What it, this is gonna do here, it's gonna split a new tip or some new shoots right there at that like node there. It's got like some hairs on there from where the first leaf set came out. It'll probably split from that area. So you can always just pop tops, just pop the tops. That'll keep it bushy too. Let's keep going. Let's show you around the other nursery. I'm gonna show you where we got our first drumstick in the farm. 
we're developing this two and a half acre farm right now uh, to, to encompass uh, yoga retreat uh, capability. So we'll have a nice yoga deck here. We just got a huge greenhouse roof. It's like a 30 foot wide greenhouse roof that we're gonna put up over here in the nursery area, the commercial nursery area. That was kind of like our little staging area for right now. But we do got some 15 gallons here. These are like two or three year old trees. And to keep them bushy, <laughs> they just froze back to the ground. Uh, literally in pots, because out here we don't have any cover yet. We don't have any protection. It does get kind of cold in the winter here. We get about a day to two days worth of frost at night, maybe three days of frost a night a year. And so all of these babies were six foot tall. They died back to the ground and now they're coming back out more bushy. If I want to get them real bushy before they get too tall, like I said, let's go ahead and do this one right here because she's about to stretch. Just pop the top. So to keep your trees more bushy, you're going to go ahead and just pop that top. And uh, I really should make it a clean, a clean top. I'm just going to set this here. Maybe, maybe it'll work. Let me just set this down. <laughs> So I can get a clean cut here. There we go. Great. So you just pop the top. What she's going to do here. Oh, here's the old stem. One of the old stems. Just take that old stem off. She's going to split from here. She's going to pop out more from here. She's going to pop out more from here. You can keep them or take them off. These are solar panels. They'll fall off naturally. You can eat this. Mmm. Fresh microgreen. Really, really great. Part of the Moringa tree. Keep your moringa trees bushy. Guess what we did last night? Got the second beehive moved over here. I don't know if you can see that, yep, beehives. Got them from the front to the back. That way the neighbors are, are cool. They like to play, play sports out in their front yard. And I had the beehives on the edge of my front yard. And, and uh, the bees ended up turning African, Africanized out here in the wild. So the inspectors were like, you know, you, you gotta really get you know, these bees taken care of and move them so that way they're further away from people. And then also we have to take care of the, you know, the Africanized. <sighs> so many things to talk about, but today we're focused on how to keep your trees bushy. <laughs> Look at this, one of the drumsticks on our Moringa trees. So I planted about 30 trees on a row uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago already. These, this row I planted out in October of 19 when we first moved in and I haven't touched them since then. I haven't touched these trees since moving in, just letting them do their thing. I cut them back once. I popped the flowers a couple times. They were real bushy. They got a lot of greens on them, but I wanted to use this row as an example so we could make this video right here and you could see why they're not bushy. Everyone's asking, why aren't my trees bushy? Why am I losing all the leaves? How to keep your Moringa trees bushy? What's going to happen is the flowers are going to go to seed and she's going to lose all her leaves. Barely any leaves on this baby. Solution? I'd come back and I'd cut it back here about 18 inches from the split. That way from this collar, this collar, this collar, and this collar, regrow new branches, splits out and gets more bushy. So just cut it back here at a 45 degree angle, about 18 inches from the split and this tree will be a short bushy tree within a couple of weeks from now. And you get to harvest the drumstick. So uh, we've got a little row here, which I'm actually gonna turn into the drive path. We're gonna move this row, just changing up the design. Haven't touched them, haven't touched them. Very bare, very bare, no, no greens. Got drumsticks, um, but no, no greens. Solution, I'd probably cut her back here. Probably cut her back here, probably cut her back here. 45 degree angle, about 18 inches from the split. That way she shortens back out and bushes back out with fresh new greens. And we'll keep, we'll keep structurizing it bushier and bushier and bushier every 18 inches after she grows back out, get some more wood like this, you know, so that way she can experience a little bit more splitting and more bush, bushing, bushiness. You know, just nothing, just completely bare. Um, lost all their leaves. If I would cut all these back right now within two weeks, they'd all be bushed out. Could also be the location. They're close to this edge here. There's some pine in there. Uh, might be just too close to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, um, uh, to the oak trees. But look, fresh drumsticks, 
fresh drumsticks. Haven't touched it in a year. These are all one year from, from planting. Some of them were replanted from other properties like this was cuttings and even replantings from other properties. Yeah, I moved the bees last night and they're all going back to this spot right here. But I moved the main hive and I put a little temporary hive right here. They're starting to come around me. They're really, really Africanized. So I just wanted to show you really quick. They're bushy. They're, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. You gotta keep popping them, keep cutting them, keep eating them. Be a rhinoceros, be an elephant, be in the wild and go out there and eat some Moringa. That way when you come back, she's gonna be even more bushy. So our goal today is to go ahead and pop all the flowers off of these trees because we wanna keep it bushy. This one uh, is a cutting from January that I planted in here in straight mulch, nothing else. And she made it um, beautifully. And so we're just gonna pop all these flowers off real quick. We're gonna keep her bushy. The bees are coming over, I think. They smell me. Okay, so we're just gonna get all these popped off here. <laughs> okay. Hold your tongue. Wow, this tree, you wouldn't believe it. This tree has got a ton of flowers right now. So just one of the ways to keep it bushy without even popping anything back is just to harvest the flowers. Look at that beautiful medicine right there. Oh, oh, the big black one. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, that's what I keep saying. This Moringa tree with the flowers on it always attracts that native black bee, the huge one, that huge black bee. She's swarming around me. She's trying to get this flower right here. She's right here on me. That's the native black bee, that big bumble. They love, oh, oh, I can, I can, I can feel this other, this other queenie starting to bump my head. She's like, go on now, you better get out of here. <laughs> um, so some of these cuttings made it. And with the rains coming back, they're going to go ahead and bush out real nicely real soon. Any of the ones that didn't make it will replace. But just happy to see that we can uh, cut these um, flowers. Um, off. We can just pull these flowers off and the trees will maintain their bushiness. We just harvested, this was our first harvest just a week ago. We just harvested this tree a week ago. Look at this. And it's already bushing back out. Huge, huge progress within the first week. Watch, by the second week, you won't be able to even see through this tree. And so she's already started to come back with all new shoots. Like I said, I cut it 18. The 24 inches from the from the main piece and then she has more opportunities to bush out if i was to just cut this stem here back back here it wouldn't it would only have one or two maybe opportunities to split but because i keep it a little bit longer i get so many more opportunities to split which is why my trees are much much more bushier than a lot of the other people around oh shit. this freaking black snake right here looking at me what are you kidding me you just chilling looking at me? I just almost walked into a freaking black snake. Can you all see that? You see that black snake just looking at me? Are you kidding? You want some flowers? You want some greens? No, man, you want like a mouse or something. I grabbed his, I grabbed him the other day. He was like, bro, oh, why'd you grab me? He's like, he's like, what's going on? What's going on? You're looking good. Oh, he's getting sun right now. He's just getting some sun right now. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, looking good. Protector. Just gave him a little love tap. <laughs> yeah, we're buddies. I seen him over there by the deck. I've handled him a couple times already um, over there by the bananas. And he's keeping the place clean. So yeah, that's how you keep your Moringa trees bushy. Um, thanks for watching and joining us at Numa Farms and Nursery. We've got a, now a bouquet of flowers that we can get dried. Maybe I'll just keep them on the table for my girlfriend so she can come in and see them. She loves flowers. <sighs> These Moringa flowers actually attract a lot of pests. Um, I've noticed this while drying them. So if you're drying them inside, have like a little like fly catcher or something around it because little bugs there's a freaking bug right there on it i'm like looking looking right at it it's like a little leaf leaf miner bug but um mealy bugs ants you know all kinds of little flying critters in there uh one of the ways that we get bugs of all kinds out of our products is just by freezing them 
So after drying, we'll freeze for like 24, 36 hours just to make sure there's no larva in there. And um, that way it protects all the, all the product from getting ruined from eating, eating bugs. <laughs> so thanks for watching and joining. Learn how to keep your Moringa trees bushy right here from the expert, the Moringa expert. Give me a text message, 813-567-3100. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, we even have some cuttings in here that have sprouted flowers. Look at this. So I'm going to plant those ones in the ground here pretty soon. Um, and there'll be cuttings just like those ones out there that'll be growing. Uh, really appreciate you guys for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing. Until next time, peace, love, prosperous growing. Ciao.